What's up my century again, it's the Sentryman here, so back again with another classic Survivor Series pay-per-view review. I know you're thinking, yeah, Survivor Series is over in our current timeline, I know. I'm trying to review one more Survivor Series show before the month is out, so today I'm reviewing Survivor Series 2000 at the Ice Palace. Right now it's called the Amalai Arena in Tampa, Florida. On the 19th of November 2000, the attendance for the show was 18,602. And the buy rate for the show was 400,000 pay-per-view buys. Um, a downgrade than the previous year's Survivor Series show from 1999. I think it's the lowest buy rate Survivor Series since 96 or 97. I think it was 1996 because that show was at Madison Square Garden. But that show received about 199,000 pay-per-view buys. I might be wrong about this, I think this is the lowest buy rate pay-per-view for the WWF of that year. It might not be the, the lowest buy rate uh, pay-per-view for the WWF, but it's one of the lowest buy rate pay-per-view of the WWF of that year. Because Legends this uh, year of 2000 was one of the best years for the Attitude Era. You know, due to the star power and the popularity of the company, because the WWF was on the top of the world compared to the other two wrestling companies at that time WCW and ECW were on its uh, massive decline that led to their demise in 2001 anyway so last year I reviewed Survivor Series 1999 it was memorable for the debut of Kurt Angle and who run over Stone Cold Steve Austin so after a 12 month year build of this storyline this show kind of, I say kind of, got a payoff. We'll get to that later on in this review. Um, so the commentators for the show are JR and The King. So let's talk about um, the Heat. Um, let's do a quick result on Heat. You had Foul Phoenix defeat Jeff Hardy in a standard wrestling match. And also and also Jeff Hardy does also compete um, in the... The other Survivor Series match on this show. So basically Jeff Hardy's did double duty on the show. Uh, we'll get to the, the uh, second Survivor Series match. One of two Survivor Series matches on this show. Anyway, so the first match to kick off the main show. We got a six person mixed tag team match. Um, we got T and A. That is Tess and Albert and Trish Stratus. I wish they call it just T and A and T. Yeah, T A the tat, you know, T A and T, you know, um, yeah, t uh, yeah, you know, uh, Test, Albert, and Trish. They should have really called that, in my opinion. Anyway, um, they taken on the Hollies. That is Crash Holly and Molly Holly and Steve Blackman. Steve Blackman was the reigning defending hardcore champion at the time. The match. Oh, by the way, they were wearing a yeah, T yeah, Test and Albert were wearing like T A or the T N A P A. It's basically the same t-shirts what the APA were wearing because they like beat the fuck out. They really injured the, the APA, you know, to get some heat. Um, yeah, yeah testing out, but I think they're very underrated, you know. But anyway, so um, the match was okay. It wasn't a terrible match, but at the same time, it wasn't fantastic. It's a way to kick off the show. It's just a standard um, six-person tag team match. Um, Trish was so green. Um, she got better in years to come, you know, you know tr yeah, Trish, Lita, you know, Lita also could be on the show, we'll get to her later on, but, um, I think the one female represent the Attitude Era, I have to go with China, you know, I'll, I'll do a future video on that in the future, you know, like, the, the top female wrestler in each era of WWE, you know, I think like, the, the, you can throw in Sable, but I think like I go with China because she was good in the ring. Um, she was at the time was one of the biggest draw on Playboy at the time. Trish and Lita, you know, I think they kind of represent. They're kind of like two biggest female stars of the ruthless aggression era. You know, you know that's the reason why I don't really rate Trish in the Attitude Era. You know, she was starting out in the, you know, in the Attitude Era, and then by the time in the in the later on the in the well early to mid. 2000s, you can tell she was becoming one of the biggest stars of the Rufus Aggression era, you know, due to like drawing Playboy and in in ring quality. Anyway, so in the yeah, uh, yeah, Steve Blackman and the Hollies got the victory. Molly Holly pinned Trish for the win, and so moving on to 
the, uh, the second match of the night, that is the um, 4 on 4 Survivor Series, uh, the first Survivor Series elimination match of the night. We've got the Radicals, that is Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, Dean Malenko, and Perry Saturn with Terry um, taking on Road Dog Jesse James, K Quick. K Quick is the future R Truth. The one Billy Gunn. I'll get to Billy Gunn's nickname shortly. And China. Uh, China and Eddie were kind of like a on screen couple. You know, they did the whole Latino heat, Mama Sita thing, and then suddenly Eddie cheating on China, um, having sex or messing around with one of the Godfather's hoes. Uh, that was Lisa, Mar or was it Lisa Marie Ferran. That's the future Victoria, the future Tara. And yeah, uh, Eddie cast um, the build up a few weeks before the start of the, the pay per view. Not the start of the pay per view, but through a few weeks before the pay per view. Um, yeah, Eddie kind of cast hit uh, yeah China and Billy Gunn a tag team match on Raw with the Right to Censor guys. They also feel with Right to Censor guys, and also this was kind of a this is going to be a buzzword kind of a reunion of D Generation X, and then all of a sudden that you can sell kind of break up because. You know, Triple H turn heel, we'll get to Triple H later on in this review. And also, speaking of the one nickname, the reason why he was known as the one Billy Gunn, because on an episode, I think it was an, on the episode of Raw, I think, Billy Gunn lost a match to Steve Richards. He cannot use the nickname Mr. Ass. He was known as Bissy A Mr. Ass. Now, he's now the one Billy Gunn. That was a dumb Nicknames for Billy Gunn, Mr. Ass, and the one. It's just stupid. Don't want to get into it. You know, it's a, it's a one. It's just a desperate attempt for you know giving Billy Gunn a push. Anyway, so this is because Billy Gunn's first matches back in the company. He suffered a shoulder injury in a team boss match with the Dudleys a few months ago. Anyway, this is yeah first match back on a pay per view. And it was an okay match, the, you know, I think the, the second one was a bit better, we'll get to that later on, uh, but um, the first one was okay, yeah, like, uh, with, you got one or two wrestlers, got some credibility, China got some credibility, you know, um, but you can say Eddie and Benoit, Saturn, not so much, you know, uh, Malenko, oh, don't know. But, yeah, the, the baby face size, China's got some credibility, I get it. But with, um, um, for K-Quick, Rodar, Billy Gunn, no. Anyway, uh, China got eliminated first after Eddie did, uh, hit China with the Intercontinental title. By the way, Eddie was the IC champion at the time. Hit China in the back of the head with a belt. And Perry Saturn eliminated China. And then Billy Gunn eliminated Eddie Guerrero. And I think the crowd kind of died because it's just what it is. I think people want to see China again her revenge on Eddie. Unfortunately, I don't think they did that. I don't know. It's really disappointing. Anyway, so I'm trying to keep it short and simple. Yeah, the Radicals got the victory. The sole survivors for that uh, for the Radicals are Chris Benoit and Perry, Perry Saturn. Um, and by the way, uh, Eddie ended up losing the Intercontinental title to Billy Gunn not too long ago. You know, I think it was I think it was on a roll, or I think it was Rebellion. Yeah, trust me, he ended up beating Eddie for the IC title. You know, trying to give him a second push, but unfortunately, that was too little, too late. They should have really put the IC title belt on Billy Gunn in 1999. Instead, the whole let's swap um have Road Dog challenge for the IC title and Billy Gunn challenge for the Hardcore title. I think it was just I don't I don't want to get into it. It's that and the Rock, you know, Rock's promo kind of like like. Buried and lose its credibility of Billy Gunn. That's just me. Yeah, the, the end up went went on to their separate ways. You know, Road Dog and K Quick end up leaving the company in 2001. Billy Gunn sticked around until 2005. End up you know be part part of the tag team known as Billy and Chuck. China end up finding right to census uh the group in the end of 2000 in the, in the early parts of 2001. Wednesday Women's Tile left the company of the following year. That was it. <laughs> Um, anyway, and, uh, and also, this was the last time Billy Gunn and Road Dog teamed together since, until 2013. Yeah, they end up reunited again in TNA in the mid two, what, in the mid 2000s. Mid, I think it was, yeah, yeah, I say mid 2000s. Um, but it's just, uh, just, just a bit on the side note that um, it's the last time 
that uh, Rodog and you know the Outlaws, Billy Gunn and Rodog team together until they're running TNA and they'll reunite again in 2013 or oh, 2012. I said 2013. You know, anyway. So let's move on. Let's move on. Rambling a little bit. Um, but overall, it's just an, it's, it's an okay match. Why is um, the second Survivor Series match is a bit better. Anyway, so uh, the next match we got Chris Jericho versus Kane. Holy shit! This is all of, the build to this is all about coffee. Yeah, coffee. Um, because Chris Jericho accidentally spilled coffee on Kane, and they end up like casting each other uh, match title matches. I think like Jer I think Kane cast Jericho the WWF title match, and uh, I think. Uh, also, Jericho cost Kane the hardcore title match, so that's the build up to this. And also, he like chucks, yeah, Kane chucks on Jericho through an, an announce table, and also throwing him in, into a window. You know, that's the build up to this. Um, anyway, so the match between um Jericho and Kane, it was an okay match. It was a deep, actually, it's a decent match. You know, there was one major botch for Jericho. Jericho was going for like a suicide dive or something, or. Some kind of move off the top rope, but instead he kind of tripped and almost landed on his head. But I think they, they kind of recover a little bit. I think he hit like a crappy lucky, um, he does these typical drop kicks, you know, you know, you know, near the corner, near the, um, the corner, you know, the ring apron area. That was, you know, Jericho, Jericho, this is not Jericho's best matches in his career. But, I say it's decent, but it's not one of the best. It's not like a four-star classic, but it's just what it is. Um, try to keep it short and simple. The second half of the match is starting to get pick up a bit. Uh, I think Kane was going for like a, a move up the top rope, and Jericho counted into a drop kick. That was cool. Um, Jericho trying to lock Kane in the walls of Jericho. I think Kane kind of counted it. I think Jericho also kind of trying to lock him in a leg, uh, in a leg hold, but... Kind of also turn it, also transform it into the walls of, Jer walls of Jericho again. In the end, Kane hit. Um, yeah, Jericho was going. Yeah, I think Jericho. Um, got he was. I think he was going for the ball. Hit Kane with the bulldog. He was going for the lion salt, but instead, uh, Kane caught it into the choke slam for the win. And then minutes later on the show, they end up brawling, and this will set up a last man standing match at on again the following month. So moving on to um the next match um yeah the next match um this is for the European Championship William Regal defending the belt against Hardcore Holly um this was Hardcore Holly's first match back in the company since he suffered an injury by the way he suffered a an arm injury in the hands of Kurt Angle I don't get it what's up what what's up, what's the big deal of wrestlers injure their shoulder and arm in the year two thousand no, don't get it um anyway so. Regal car promo towards the um the American people for not electing a president because at the time I think uh yeah George Bush uh Jr. became president but he was um competing with Al Gore. I think Al Gore was the former vice president of Bill Clinton. The you know, I think yeah, there were you know, yeah, George Bush uh George Bush uh I want to say senior, but junior end up becoming president. By the way, um, and also he said I think he bashed people for not saying please and thank you at the correct time. He's about to sh talk shit towards Michael Holly, but his music hit. The match was one of the worst, not worst, but one of the weakest matches on the show. It's just no build to this. I heard it was just add to the last minute. You know, you know because Michael Holly confronted Regal on an episode of Heat before the show. Anyway. Box of the match, Regal worked on the injured arm of Harko Holly, and, and after and in the end, had Harko Holly hit Regal in the face with the European title belt. That led to disqualification, and that was it. So let's move on to the next match. So the next match, we got Rikishi versus The Rock. So like I said, yeah, one year anniversary since who run down Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, Rikishi was kind of like I'll get them more in depth. We get to the Stone Cold Triple H match in the main event later on in this review. So, yeah, so yeah, Rikishi was revealed to be the one, ma uh, not Masked Man, but the one who run down Stone Cold Steve Austin. He said like he got the, a, te a text message towards The Rock. The Rock denied it. Um, you know he, you know he did it for The Rock. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, anyway, so the build up to this, I think it was on SmackDown or Raw. You had basically um. Rikishi hit The Rock in the chest with the sledgehammer. You know, Triple H was driving the car, 
and Rikishi hit the rock with the sledgehammer, you know, joust it, joust the rock with the sledgehammer, so, um, that's, uh, you know, to get some heat on this match on the show, anyway, the match between Rikishi and the rock, oh, by the way, Rikishi is the one who run over Stone Cold Steve Austin, I think it was, uh, I'll get more, we get to the, um, Triple H, Austin, Tri Triple H Steve Austin match in the main event later on, like I said, um, but, um, yeah, I think it was just dumb, because I understand why they picked it, but Rikishi be the one, I think it was in poor taste, like, yeah, um, so, so was it Solova, Fatu, you know, Rikishi, um, he's been in the company for years, but the Rikishi, uh, character debuted months after Austin got run over, um, anyway, it's just, it's just, like, very odd and underwhelming, you know, kill term, don't really need, you know, they're trying to give Rikishi a, a push, unfortunately, it fell flat on its ass. Uh, yeah, the yeah, this was a really good match between The Rock and Rikishi. You know, the you know family members. You know, I think they're cousins. I think they're cousins. You know, they're not brothers. They're cousins. By the way, they're cousins. Anyway, um, the bulk yeah, the bulk of the match. Yeah, the, yeah, Rikishi work on The Rock's chest. Keep doing heart punches. Um, I think, I think, uh, yeah, Rikishi kicked out of The Rock bottom. Um, yeah, the Riki Rikishi hit The Rock with the stink face. Um. Um, he kind of dropped, uh, Rock in, uh, yeah, he kind of did, like, a, not a boom drop, but kind of, like, an ass drop onto the Rock, kicked out. He was trying to hit the Rock with the sledgehammer, but I think he, the Rock stopped it. This was a really good match, back and forth between the Rock and Rikishi. In the end, the Rock hit the people's elbow onto Rikishi for the win, and afterwards, Rikishi attacked the Rock, hit the bonsai drop on the Rock, you know, you know, to injure the chest even more. You know, it's funny, there was a video package of the rock bleeding after, you know, you know, because Rikishi's working on the injured chest of the rock, you know, that was a bit scary, it's what it is, so, I'd rather have Rikishi, I don't mind rock losing to Rikishi, I, I, and also I found on Wikipedia, I haven't really reviewed No Mercy 2000, I'll get, I might review that in the future, but, um, I think, <laughs> You know, yeah, him the super kick, then the um the boom drop, and I think he, I think Rikishi. I found this on the, I found on Wikipedia that um yeah, Rikishi cast the Rock, the WWE title match against Kurt Angle on episode of Raw to build up to their match at Survivor Series. You know, it's just what it is. So, you know, yeah, Rikishi. I don't know. I don't want to get in more depth about it. I think, you know, I think he's better off. Turn heel in a different way, like to turn you know, betray both Sky Too High and Brian Christopher. But him being the one who run over Steve Steve Austin, not so much. You know, it, you know, and he ended up being the um the WWE title pitcher the following month at Arm again in that six man hell and cell match. And then afterwards they do nothing and then he went back as a baby face. It was just a, a worse heel turn. It, it, I don't you know, I don't you know, Rikishi was fine. I don't see him being a world ch I don't think he's world champion material. That's just me. Anyway, um, enough of that. Uh, so, moving on to the next match. The next match, this is for the Women's Championship. Ivory represent right to censor. Defending the belt against Lita. Okay match. Uh, the One more of the match, you had Lita bleed buckets. Uh, she had a cut near her eye facial area. You know, because Ivory get, you know, hit Lita with some stiff punches. But she kind of, like, held on on her own. Yeah, yeah, some interference by Stevie Richards. Um, you going for the, the, the moonsault. Um, yeah, he was, for the first attempt, you know, trying to pin Lee, uh, Ivory. But, yeah, Stevie kind of, like, pushed, really dragged, um, Ivory out of the ring. Um, yeah, Lee was going for a second, um, moonsault attempt. But instead, uh, Ivory put her foot, uh, legs, you know, knees up at the last minute. So I'm stumbling, by the way. Uh, in the end, he, I think she roll, rolled up Lita for the win. It's just what it is. You know, it was okay match. Nothing special. You know, I don't think there was any chemistry. Um, go back to the, um, the Regal, my Hawk or Harlem match. I think, I don't think they had any chemistry. They're, but, like, they're good wrestlers. I think they just do not click. Maybe the, the styles, you know, um, they just do not match well. It's just what it is, so. Anyway. <clears throat> so, moving on to... Yeah, moving on to the WWF title match. We've got Kurt Angle defending the belt against The Undertaker. This show marks the 10-year anniversary of The Undertaker's debut because he debuted at Survivor Series 1990. And he, st he became the household name for the World Wrestling Federation. So, K 
Kurt Angle debuted at the previous year, Survivor Series in 99. He went on having an undefeated streak. 2000 was, really, Angle was the wrestler of 2000 for the WWF, you know. They put the rocket strap onto Angle, like, it, you know, yeah, undefeated streak, and then he become the European and IC champion, become the Euro Continental champion. Then he went on to become um, the, the winner of the King of the Ring of 2000. He defeated The Rock um, the previous month at No Mercy to become the new WWF champion. Brick the Dilopoli, because at the time, the, the belt was tr traded back and forth between The Rock and Triple H. It, it was basically the uh, the cherry on top. Um, and also, there's I'll get to one funny segment on this show. You know, you know basically, um, Angle asked Edge and Christian for help, but they said that they got, uh, they got a match on the show and Christian is calling down of, of an illness and then also Trish also asks for uh, Angle for some special assistance you know and, and Angle says um you know t tell Tess and Albert say thank you but I got this you know it's, it's just dorky Kurt Angle if I could pair one character I did Loki not too long ago in our, in our current timeline you know the Loki show if I compare a you know, compare one wrestler, a one uh, villain, or one character of the uh, the Marvel MCU universe, I compare Kurt Angle to Loki because the both could be serious, but at the same time have their funny moments. Like Kurt Angle, he could be serious in the ring, but at the same time do a lot of comedy stuff with um you know with Edge and Christian, and they end up dressing up like hillbillies. You know, good. You know, it's just um Kurt Angle is like very charismatic. But, you know, very, you know, yeah, he just, like, proved that, you know, I heard, like, Gene Cornette says, like, uh, comedy don't draw, but, you know, they, you know, Edge, Christian, Angle proved him wrong, wrong, you know, can't, comedy can draw, um, anyway, back to this match, this is basically match of the night, um, match of the, yeah, match of the night, um, yeah, the box of the match, you have The Undertaker, there's one video package, you know, on this, on the, in this match on the show, you had, um, Undertaker went on to, he defeated um, four other competitors, you know, including Chris Jericho, in a, I think it was Undertaker, Kane, Benoit, Jericho in a four-way match on SmackDown, and the funny part, you know, Team White, the referee, trying to, trying to Undertaker refused to uh, let Team White uh, raise his hand, and he, he runs off, I find it a little bit funny why they put that in the uh, video package, and also Undertaker's theme music was dubbed, um, he came out with um, Rolling by Limp Biscuit. He came out with You're Gonna Pay. Um, that'll be his Rufus Aggression theme music. That'll be in like what, 2001, 2002? I think it was 2002. He came out with You're Gonna Pay. Um, because in being early, early, you know, 2000, 2001, early parts of 2002, he came out with um, uh, Rolling by Limp Biscuit. Anyway, so yeah, match of the night. Uh, yeah, the box of the match, you had Angle work on the leg of the Undertaker, locking in the frequent leg lock. You had fans kind of woo. You know, the, the you know, the will a little bit. Um um Undertaker work on the arm of the of Angle, you know, locking in the arm bar. And Angle did tap out but he got he got distracted by Edge and Christian. Yeah, take a take out both Edge and Christian. Um the ending was fucking good. Yeah, he had um yeah he had uh you had uh take again the face of Earl Henna. Yeah, the create the finish was so creative and good, um yeah. Angle went went under the ring. Taker self proclaimed pulled him out of the ring. You know, ring apron. Trying to, I'm trying to say, hit him with the I think it was the last ride. And Earl 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 had another referee. He's about to do the free count. And he just said to Undertaker, "That's not Kurt Angle." Taker got pissed off. He's about I think he's about to choke some Hebner, but instead, uh, yeah, Angle basically came out of nowhere, rolled rolled up the Undertaker. Referee did the free count for the win, and the the. And by the way, the, uh, the imposter was Kurt Angle's brother, Eric Angle. That was really creative. You know, way better than what they did in recent years, you know, in 2015 with Paige versus Mickey Bell for the Divas title. That's another story for another time. I don't want to get into it. So it makes sense because Angle just won the belt at No Mercy. It makes no sense. He went on to lose the belt one month later. It makes no sense. So he went on to hold the title until losing to The Rock at No Mercy in 2001. So yeah, it was match of the night. I really, some parts was a bit boring, but I really enjoyed the chemistry between Angle and the Undertaker. Next time they fight again, 
Yeah, the fight, maybe what, once or twice, probably on Raw and SmackDown in the next couple of years. Next time the fight on a pay-per-view was Vengeance of 2002. And then again at No Way Out 2006. You know, that was another good match. You know, very underrated, you know, very, very underrated chemistry between Undertaker and Kurt Angle. Anyway, moving on to the second and final Survivor Series match of the night. We got Edge and Christian and the Right to Censor group, represent Right to Censor, Bull Buchanan, the future bodyguard of John Cena, and the Godfather with Val Finnis in the Right to Censor corner, and also Edge and Christian's corner, taking on the Dudleys and the Hardys. This was a fun match. Not they've been great. They've been better Survivor Series matches over the years, but this is the problem with Survivor Series matches, not just in different eras, but right now there's no. Uh, nothing's on the line. That's the massive problem. You know, you get like in 2001 with the you know, the Alliance versus the WWF or, you know, Team Austin versus Team Bischoff. Austin lose, he'll be gone. Or, you know, Team Cena versus the Authority. You know, I, that's in uh, 2014. Or even the first Brand Supreme Survivor Series of 2016. There was no... Nothing's on the line. That's the massive one nitpick about Survivor Series matches over the decades. Anyway, so I'm trying to keep it short and simple. Um, uh, yeah, um, Jeff Hardy was the sole survivor of that Survivor Series match, and then yeah, the Right to Center group uh, end up being down uh, Jeff Hardy, and then Edge, and, yeah, not Edge and Christian, uh, the Dudleys, and Matt Hardy came to the rescue. He ended up putting through. I think he put one of the. I think he put through one of the Right to Center uh, member through a table to get you know to get some heat to to stand tall. So. Moving on to the main event. We got Triple H versus Stone Cold Steve Austin in a no DQ match. Last year at Survivor Series in the main event, it was a triple threat match. The original triple threat match for the World Wrestling Federation at last year's Survivor Series in 1999. It was supposed to be Triple H, The Rock, and Stone Cold Steve Austin. But instead, Big Show was the substitute of Steve Austin. They did a angle that soon to be morphed into a storyline. Uh, who ran over Stone Cold Steve Austin? It's the way to run off Austin to get neck surgery. He missed the whole of 2000 because he's still recovering due to his neck uh, surgery, his neck injury. He did appear in WF television in 2000, but as a character, but not as a wrestler. So yeah, they did this storyline. Who ran over Stone Cold Steve Austin? Um, I said they kind of got a payoff, but. To be honest with you, they haven't got no payoff. So yeah, they say, you know, Rikishi is the one who run over Steve Austin, but Triple H mastermind it. I don't understand why, you know, um, what, you know, because the tri Rikishi be the reveal to be the one who uh, <laughs> run down Steve Austin was very underwhelming. It led to, uh, it got nowhere for Rikishi's career. It knew nothing for Rikishi's career to be the one who attacked Steve Austin. You know, yeah, I think the original idea was supposed to be Triple H to be the reveal. You know, I think it, I think it was so predictable. You know, no, no, we found someone better, but nah, it was just un underwhelming. You know, why could be Triple H be the one who run run over Steve Austin? I simply don't get it. You know, you know, Triple H was on his on the verge to become one of the top heels of the company at the time. Be him be revealed to be the not mastermind, but the one who actually execute. The run, the hit and run will be at more heat. Um, but it's just kind of like they kind of kiboshed this man. Anyway, so I think yeah, they had yeah Triple H did the, yeah, they had this um the raw before the show you know a few weeks before the show, you know DX did a reunion you know Triple H self proclaimed turning baby face. Unfortunately, it was a like a, a swerve you know Triple H once again is a heel beat down Steve Austin. This was a handicap match on Raw. You know, him with a sledgehammer and multiple punch. He was wearing like a black glove, multiple punches. So, and also he's almost like dropped like a crate on his head, trying to kill him again. self claim. I, I don't know it's kayfabe. I get it. Uh, let's get let's get to the actual match itself. The match between Triple H and Stone Cold. I think this is Stone Cold's first pay per view match. I say since No Mercy of '99. You know, you know, he didn't compete at Survivor Series. Like they got, re they did this angle to written him off to get neck surgery. This is more of a brawl than an actual match. I really enjoy it, you know, but I don't know. It's just more of an actual brawl than an actual match. You know, I kind of like it. Um, 
a fight near the crowd, and then um, before that, um, at the time, the commissioner of the World Wrestling Federation, Mick Foley, told the radicals to stay uh, banned from ringside, but they did, you know, they were fighting, they were fighting in the backstage area, and the radicals beating down um, Austin, Triple H, trying to make a escape goal, trying to make his escape. He's in the car, you know, him, you know, Austin, and him, Benoit, kind of like fight a little bit, and then, you know, Austin, you know, Austin chased Benoit. Triple H was, like I said, in the car, and the car was mic'd up. You can hear his voice says, where is he? Where is he? Stupid son of a bitch. You know, and Austin, he drives a forklift. I, I, I don't understand, over, I don't understand over the years why Austin has the time to master heavy machinery vehicles, you know, like beer trucks, and I think he blow the DX Express. I, I, what the hell, man? Yeah, you had, um, Ar you had, Ar yeah, Austin says, give me a hell yeah, you stupid son of a bitch, and Trillish says, I'm re I regret the car thing, and then, he dropped the car, you know, you had Trillish, you had Trillish, you know, Austin dropped the car, you know, he was riding the fork cliff and dropped the car, you had Trillish with that line says, holy shit, you know, I'm glad they kept, i glad they did not bleep it out, you know, you know, I see, I see that, I see over the years, on the, on the day that YouTube channel, but, um, that was bleeped out, but on the network, you know, they didn't bleep out when Triple H, you know, dropped the word shit. Um, and also, like, I understand why they did that, you know, you know, self proclaimed Triple H, uh, Austin Scars of Revenge, sort of, um, you know, he laughed and that was the end of the show, I don't get it, um, that was a cool moment to see that, um, but, if it was on Raw or SmackDown, I get it, you know, it's a good cliffhanger, but... And the match was a non-contest. Why they did... You know, I understand. And also, I think it was a two weeks later or a week later on Raw, Triple H came out fine without any in major injuries and, like, uh, black eyes and bruises. You know, it's like... I get it, it's wrestling. You know, you gotta try, you're trying to expend beliefs, but, there was, you know, when Triple H not came... This is similar to... Uh, in WCW in 95, Halloween, Hall Halloween Havoc 95... With Hulk Hogan and the Giants, you know, when Hogan pushed the Giant off Cobra Hall, and then later on in the main event of that show, he came, you know, the Giant came out fine without any scratch or major injuries. It's just like, come on, you know, it kind of killed off the illusion, you know. It's just like, I understand why they did that added to where they get away murder, but I don't, I, it's just like, you know, you know, and, and JR selling it like Triple H is killed, it's just like, come on now. It's just what it is, so, anyway, so, oh, it was an okay main event, you know, I think people want more. I like their match at No Way Out in 2001, we, you know, you know, you want to see my review of No Way Out 2001, just click in the playlist and you'll probably find my review of WWF No Way Out 2000, uh, 2001. I'm going to say No Mercy, but I'm, I say No Way Out 2001, because they end up having a the match of the night on that show that, you know, the three stages of the hell match, you know. Um, Triple H end up winning it. Um, and it's very funny that Steve Austin never beat Triple H on a pay per view. You know, I think Austin should have got that win. You know, it's just like um, the two guys Austin never won. Never won was yeah, um, Bret Hart and Triple H. It's just a damn shame. You know, you know, good. Yeah, it's uh, good for you know the car, the car forklift moment, but the actual match itself it could be a lot better. So. Anyway, so my final rating for Survivor Series 2000, my rating, I give it a 6 out of 10. It was a bit better than Survivor Series 99, I think that was a mediocre show. Out of the, um, the five pay-per-views in the Attitude, the five Survivor Series pay-per-view of the Attitude era, don't count 97, that's just part of the new gen era. Um, but um, I placed it, it could be number two or number three. It was an okay show for what it is, so... Um, the only match in the band has to be um, William Regal and Hardcore Harley for the European title. That was just mediocre. Most of the matches were okay. Like, um, good example, the opener, the first Survivor Series. Um, I, actually, I'm going to, yeah, I'll give it 6 out of 10. I'll still give it 6 out of 10. But the two, actually, actually yeah, um, the two Survivor Series matches, that's okay. Um, lead, uh, Ivory, leader for the women's title. And also, Triple H, Austin, you know, good for, like I said, the car, forklift thing, you know, but besides that, the, 
the, the match, the execution, it's more like a match than an actual brawl, but that's Austin style. This was after he bro broke his neck for the first time in 97. But besides that, there's some good matches in the good. Um, the Jericho, yeah, the Jericho K match was decent. Um, um, yeah, uh, Rock and Rikishi was good, and also, um, yeah, Angle for The Undertaker, that was also a good match, you know, yeah, I give it a 6 out of 10, I don't really give it a 5 out of 10, it's back and forth between 5 out of 10 or 6 out of 10, but 6 and a half out of 10, 6 and a half, no, I'll probably give it a solid 6 for what it is, so, um, i rather watching Survivor Series 2000 again, not really, you know, it's just like an okay show to watch. So anyway, so hope you enjoyed my review of Survivor Series 2000. Leave a thoughts and comments below. Smash the like button. Click the bell. Subscribe to the Central Mind Network on YouTube for more wrestling videos and more. Be part of the Central Unit. Next time in the W in the classic WWE pay per view review series. Um, two a couple weeks ago I reviewed Survivor Series 1991. Let's review Tuesday night in Texas. You know because. The rematch for at Survivor Series 91. Taker, you know, his first title defense as the World Wrestling Federation Champion against the man who beat for the title at Survivor Series, Hulk Hogan. And also, Jake Roberts versus Randy Savage. You know, that'll be the next show to review. You know, that's the, you know, that'll be probably this weekend. So stay tuned for that. So like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time, folks. Thanks for watching.